Yeah, that was the rest of the shop. Um, but it's ages since we've done one of these. This video is about fuel speeds, so let's get on with it. Um, so, there's some misconceptions. I hate saying myths busted. It's just annoying. Uh, myths are like legends and stuff from antiquity or before. It's not, well, before. Uh, but you get what I mean? Myths are like, whatever, old. Uh, there's misconceptions about fuel speeds. So we're going to talk about uh, petrol or gasoline, right, uh, and diesel, right, and the difference in fuel speeds between the two. Now, if you look this up, if you just go on Google or whatever and type in what, what burns faster, you might find some weird abstract thing written by someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. Um, but if you're trying to look for data, you'll find conflicting results. And the reason why, like most things in the world, is it's complicated. So we'll very quickly talk about trying to determine the difference between, between the two. So what's happening is, is that you have this long chain molecule of carbons and hydrogens. Right? Carbons and hydrogens, right? And it can be... 24 and 58 or 16 and 32 and all sorts of stuff right different variations and what we name as fuel because no one's trying to be precise here if you go on just say like um ebay or something you can go and get 95 percent or 99.9 percent .9 propylene glycol or acetic acid or whatever right you can go and try and get these maybe not acetic acid but you can go and get these pure chemicals or as pure as we can get but petrol diesel they don't care right just get out of the ground do your fractional distillation which is basically a massive giant test tube right like this where there's valves at different things they pump in crude oil they heat it and then they just drain off this bit here and it's a constant flow system so as you're siphoning off slowly right just say a litre a minute can't well not a litre a minute but you get what i mean a litre a minute or a hundred litres a minute or whatever you're feeding in at the bottom right so as it starts to separate and all that happens is the light stuff just say like propane for example propane and stuff like that goes to the top then you'll have stuff like your kerosene right and then you'll have stuff like your bitumen and shite at the bottom. It's not how you spell bitumen, but whatever. <laughs> I'm missing an A. But that's what you do, right? So, in a sense, what you get from your... Just say, just say this is diesel and just say that's petrol, right? You're getting this... It's very much what... It's very much like, I don't know, cetane. And it's very much like octane, iso-octane in the middle. Yeah. But then... It starts to get a bit fuzzy. Right? It starts to get a bit fuzzy of exactly what that is there. Right? You know what I mean? So, it's almost like... Best <laughs> to think about it is it's like a cheesecake. Or any kind of cake. Right? You'll have your biscuit bit at the bottom and then you'll have your filling on top. Now, you're taking a slice. You're trying to get mostly cheesecake... But you end up getting a bit of this. You, know, you can't help yourself. It just You'll end up getting bits in there. Maybe that's not the best one. Maybe a trifle's better. Whatever. Desserts. Dessert explanation. With that all in mind, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine exactly how... And I'll, I'll make this really simple. Right? Imagine petrol looks like that. And imagine diesel... looks like this just imagine that's the way it is we are trying to find out which one reacts faster in a burn right in a cylinder well straight away we don't exactly have this because some of them look like this right and some of the petrol ones look like this just so you could have that right so <sighs> And the mixes change all the time. So that's your first problem. What exactly do you have? Number two is we want to compare um, 
two. Uh, I don't know. Two fluids for viscosity. We have a hill. Right, we have a slope like this. And then what we do is we have a little ball like this. And then what we do is we drop them at the same time. And this is like, I don't know, 15 degrees. Just say, this material is as perfect glass. It's as smooth as we can get it. And you just have two, two liquids dribble down here. Yeah? And this one wins. Right? So you say, oh, well, this one's runnier than that one. That's the most crudest, crudest scientific experiment you can do. The glass is the same sheet of glass, it's the same angle, it's as smooth as we can get. We've used levels to make sure everything's fucking perfect. Gravity is constant in this very small vicinity. Beautiful. Liquids at the same temperature, but then sat there for three weeks, and then we tip them at the same time in the same mechanism. Right? Wonderful. That's how you compare one to the other. The problem comes where we say, right, well, we're trying to compare the burn rate of petrol versus diesel. Okay. Everything's different. You put them in the same cylinder, same engine, same everything, right? You don't have to put them in, in an engine. You can just put them in a cylinder where you can maintain or seal. You can put them in a, basically a block. Um, I want to measure the flame speed, right? We're going to ignite it from here to there, right, like this as it progresses. But the problem is, <laughs> is that to get diesel to ignite like it would if it was a spark, you have to use different temperatures, different pressures. So they're variable straight away. Right, and they're going to change things. Um, if you want to try and do a compression of a diesel, again, different things happen in different ways. So there's a different cooling effect with petrol versus diesel. And it just goes on and on and on. Right? As the fuels burn, they create different products by different chains. So if you want to look at it in a certain way, it's almost like a family tree, right? You've got petrol you know you've got your main and you've got these products that it creates right and then they react in different ways and these two actually can co-react and there's free radicals coming in blah 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 yeah where with diesel is it's like diesel reacts and it goes through this one chain until it gets to here then you get this coming in then these exchange and then this goes through this weird where it's picking up free electrons and, and it's totally different right and you might be saying, well, yeah, that's what we want to know. We want to know the difference. The fact of the matter is, is, getting, is getting repeatable results. That's the problem. There are so many variables and so many different ways and so many things that can affect this chain of events that when you burn one versus the other, every someone, you'll be there going, blah, blah, that's not the same. And they'll say, yeah, but we had to do that because if we don't, the densities change or the, the, the temperatures change. And it's like, oh, my God. So... What is the answer? The answer is no one writes down really what the answer is because everyone has a conflicting result. And it doesn't matter, right? The fact of the matter is, is that you'll see these videos. Jason says it, I think Jason said it opposite twice. He said, diesel burns faster, diesel burns slower. I hear people say it burns faster, it burns slower. It doesn't matter. So that's the other misconception I want to get to. is fuel speeds so <laughs> we have a cylinder like this this up here is tdc we'll just say this is the, the the swept volume so this is the volume which obviously we've got a combustion chamber up here this is bottom dead center we'll have a flat top piston totally flax it's easy to see what's going on so i've heard people say this um, it's been repeated thousands of times Engines go so fast, or a Formula One engine, or a MotoGP engine, or a Summit 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 engine, goes so fast, 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 that the piston here can outrun the flame speed. So you've got this uh, flame onion, right? The flame onion, <laughs> different layers, right? Of how this progresses through time, and this has a velocity. Right, we'll just call it a linear velocity there, a velocity there, and this piston is faster. So it's V plus 1, just call it that, just for simplicity. Right, so this is going faster than the flame front. So, this is the misconception. People seem to think 
that it is the flame, like a flamethrower, pushing the piston down. No, it's not. Right? The flame front is the rate of reaction. So, if we turned our cylinder here into a sphere, and the best way to, I've found to draw a sphere is do that. So you can see it's a sphere. And right in the centre of this sphere is our ignition point, like a spark plug. It's got no body, it's invisible, it just happens there. Let's just say it's lasers or microwaves. You could use microwaves to basically where they cross in the middle, it could ignite, heat up a hot spot. So we've got this microwave ignition kind of thing. And what happens is, is that the, the fuel burns like that. So after, I don't know, let's just call it a millisecond. It doesn't really matter. One millisecond, it's there. Then millisecond two is it's there. So what's happened is, is in oh, fuck you. in this first millisecond, all the fuel and air perfectly, which never happens, but perfectly has combusted. The oxygen and the fuel have combined to make the byproducts, which is various types of carbon. We'll forget the nitrogen because it's not actually part of the actual reaction, or it shouldn't be, and water. Right? And then next thing is, is after two milliseconds your next shell and it is a shell right it's not the middle section the next shell goes and then after three milliseconds the next shell like an onion like donkey said combustion is like an onion i remember him saying it so it's like that like spreading outwards this oh i'm dropping all these jokes everywhere this velocity here right is around about and it's a roundabout because every engine changes, compression ratios, the actual density, uh, the temperature, the fuel, what mix the fuel is, are there any highly volatiles in there, blah, blah, blah. How turbulent is it? Because there's a thing called turbulent combustion and laminar combustion. And it's just, yeah. But let's just say the straight line, linear velocity of how far this shell is expanding, let's just say it's a roundabout 20 meters per second. And you can do some calculations with certain engines and go, oh my God, the piston goes faster than this. All right, so this is the reaction rate. In a sense, you can think about this is how fast you can eat a pork pie or pork pies. Let's just say there's one, two, three, four shells, this outer shell to go. And they're four pork pies, all right? And you can eat these pot pies, and pretty much because of the size of your mouth, because of everything, the size of the pot pies, the size of your mouth, you can eat them so fast. But this isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about you running along eating pot pies. So even though you can, you know, eat a pot pie per second, you might be able to run faster than a meter a second kind of thing. The fact of the matter is that what I'm saying is they're not related. What happens, what isn't been shown here, is that in this sphere, let's just call this pressure one atmosphere. When you burn the first sphere, right, the pressure in here after number one, so after this first shell goes, so shell number one equals, let's just say, 10 atmospheres. All right, and then let's just say shell number two is 30 atmospheres. All right, and let's just say shell number three, you can see I'm going with this, all right? 70. Oh, my. That's it. <laughs> New chalk. 70 atmospheres. I need to buy some more. Uh, 70 atmospheres, right? As it's going out. And the pressure wave, right? So the energy that's been forced through the whole thing, the pressure, the, the, the pressure wave that goes down, right? This travels at the speed of sound. And. The speed of sound, depending how hot this is, because speed of sound is about density and the temperature, the density of this doesn't really change, right? I know you might think this cylinder gets bigger, but compared to the speed of sound, full compression and sweat volume, compared to the speed, in relation to the speed of sound, the density has hardly changed, right? It's the temperature that's the biggest change, right? So before ignition and after ignition, the temperature has changed. Let's just call it 400 metres per second, just for why not, all right? So you can see that your piston might be going 36 metres per second, 
and that's outrunning the flame front, the reaction rate. But the speed of sound, the pressure wave, what's actually pushing down this piston is 400 meters per second. What I'm saying is, is people say, oh, it goes so fast that the piston outruns the pressure, the, the flame front. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Actually, it causes more turbulent combustion because you're creating more volume and all this stuff tries to, you know, it tries to mix it, fill that volume as it goes. But it's the pressure wave. It is the atoms hitting the top of it. And there's a difference between reactions and how molecules bump around. A good way of example is get an OXO cube or anything, right? A boiled sweet, I don't know, a sugar cube, chuck it in some water, get another cup, chuck that in the same hot water, but stir one, right? It's not a reaction, it's just dissolving. But you can see that if you stir, if you agitate it, it happens quicker, right? And what I'm saying is, is the dissolving and how fast you spin it around are two different things. And the molecules bouncing around and spinning around is the molecules that are bouncing around and spinning, you know, not spinning, but bouncing around and hitting the piston, the momentum transfer to the piston, right? So that's the, the chaotic nature. And when the temperature goes up, they, they've got more energy, right? They jump around even more, hence higher pressure. The flame front's got nothing to do with that, right? The, it's not the flame front has nothing to do with that. The flame front and the reaction, this exothermic reaction, is what is causing the gases in a cylinder to become excited. That's where the energy has been liberated and passed to all these gases, right? This whole, the piston runs away from the flame front. Who cares? It really doesn't matter, right? It, it really doesn't matter. It makes it sound like the engine is going so fast, it's outrunning its own combustion. That is also impossible, right? You are not going to outrun your own combustion. Be uh, not combustion. You're not going to outrun the thing that is pushing the piston. Some people seem to get this idea, and Drive for Answers said it in one of his videos, which is, again, another dumb thing to say, is this idea of flame fronts. Forget this idea of flame fronts. Unless you're studying... Um, combustion characteristics, this whole flame speed stuff, forget it. I right? don't. If I hear Pete, I'm gonna. <laughs> if I see people talking about it when they talk about it in the wrong context, I'm just gonna call you knobs. Right? It doesn't matter what this context is. It's got nothing to do with the performance of an engine, really, apart from ignition advance and you know, retarding in advance. That's the only thing it's got to do with giving the engine enough time to have peak pressure where you want it right where the volume is smallest ish and there's benefits and pros and cons to what that is hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit i need some more chalk man it's not i'll go back to the shop it has been a long time since i've done a video like this uh not for any particular reason it just has so uh jumping straight into it i want to today talk about um fuel speeds So, the board sorted out. Get in there. <laughs> if you don't know, this used to, it was anchored in one, two, three corners, but not the third, because it wasn't quite big enough and it used to flap around. And why is my autofocus going absolutely mental? Oh, what's going on? Where, there is a, there is a focus button. I found this out the other day. Where is the focus button? Where is the focus button? I need to remember. Where is the focus button? There's an air. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, just give me a minute. Oh, is it on here? Ah, there we are. Right, manual focus. Which is the best one? Tell you what, let's stop it. <laughs> 